Well, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. I am so excited that you were able to join us for our Leadership Now series. And we have our guest, Mike Whitehead, we'll get to in just a moment. If you are new within this series, we at Driven Leadership, we created this to really create a community of like-minded people, people who want to learn from each other. So we look for mentors, role models, uh, leaders within the community that have been through life and can actually give us tools at where we're at. And so when, you know, as we put this together back in April, I was just telling Mike this, I always wanted Mike on here. And I reached out to him and I'm like, Mike, you want to be one of my interviewees? And he never responded. And I found out that he had a different phone number. So <laughs> I tracked him down, thank God for social media. So Mike, I just want to say welcome, welcome, welcome. I am so beyond honored, so excited that you are here this morning. And I can't wait to jump into your topic. The honor is all mine. I've seen, like I said, we were talking about your yours with uh, Lindstrom and that one hooked me. And, and like I said, I went through all the uh, emotions watching that one just because I know you guys both so well and i um, just honored to know you both. And so when you asked me to be a part of it, I was like, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'm going to give you a brief introduction and I had to read this because like you're the deal. Uh, so those of you who do not know Mike Whitehead, he is a former professional mixed mar martial art artist. He competed as a light heavyweight and a heavyweight in the Ultimate Fighting Championship, AFL, Affliction and Strike Force. And I have here because I'm not, like, I don't know all this stuff. So I'm just going to correct me if I'm wrong. Um, M1 Global, IFC, Super Brawl, WEC, and the XFA. He was a state champion wrestler in high school in the 189 division in 1999 and played defensive lineman in football. Like he was also in football, ladies and gentlemen. He was a three-time All-American wrestler in college and he won the Abu Dhabi qualifier to represent the United States and the Abu Dhabi in Brazil in 2002. Wow, that's amazing. 2005, you participated in the reality series, The Ultimate Fighter 2. Prior to your fart with, fart, fight with Renato Sabral, you were in a 13 fight win streak, including fight, five straight victories in the International Fight League. You beat two world championship in his time, including Mark Keir and Kevin Randleman. You competed in the Extreme Fighting Association where you defeated Ethan Cox in a unanimous decision. You have been part of training camps, multiple and you have coached multiple champions include including randy couture forrest griffin wanderlei silva frank mir tim um sylvia yep. holy cow that's like a serious resume it's like a serious <laughs> resume but you know i didn't know you as a fighter mm -hmm. i got to meet you in 2015 and so for those of you who do not know driven leadership we have these two and a half day experiential it is just like we get to know the heart of the person. We don't get, we don't know anything about what they do in life. And all I see is this big guy who shows up at our, at that time we had called it Leadership Foundation, which now we've branded The Forge. And you are just this gentle giant, gentle giant who had this hunger just to learn, to be your best. And, you know, when I look at who you are and what you've done, I always, there's something about professional athletes that absolutely inspire me because there's a different breed. It's a different mindset to truly, you know, it's one thing to be an athlete and it's another thing to truly go to that next level to be a professional. And that's what I knew you as in our classes. And um, so I just want to know, like, how did you start? Like, where did this all come from? So my freshman year of college at North Idaho Junior College, <clears throat> I was wrestling up there and there was a, a small fighting gym that there was a coach that was somewhat connected to the wrestling team because one of the guys or well, a couple of the guys that had came through had when they finished up there, they had trained at this gym. Well, there was a guy, um, Ivan forget his last name he was getting ready for some big fight and he was a heavyweight and the, the other heavyweight was hurt and the coach came down and asked me hey 
you know, this guy's getting ready for a fight. Would you come down and help him? And I was like, all right. So I don't know anything about fighting. I've never fought before. And he's like, he's like, I just need you to wrestle him. He's fighting a wrestler. I said, all right. So came down and uh, <laughs> through that workout, um, I ended up like pretty much handling the guy. And the guy's like, you know, like, like I, the guy stormed out. Ivan, me and Ivan, I forget his last name, but me and him ended, ended up being friends down the road. But he ended up storming out of the gym and was super upset because I kind of, did what I was supposed to. And he was supposed to, he, he was fighting a wrestler. He was supposed to be working on getting up, but he couldn't get up for me. And like the coach asked me afterwards, he's like, you want to do this? Like, you're kind of good at it. I'm like, I, I know how to wrestle. I, I remember, you know, little, little, you know, high school fights, a few as a kid, not, not a big time, you know, fighter per se, but um, I was like, all right, I'll give it a shot. And then from there it just grew. So uh, you never wrestled? prior to where you said high school i know i wrestled all through i wrestled all through like uh, as a little kid all the way up through middle school and high school but i'd never fought before like i'd never okay. i'd never you know trained as far as like jujitsu or you know boxing or mma any of that stuff it, i had just wrestled so yeah from there <clears throat> um had a couple amateur fights there got went from north idaho to southern oregon university um competed in my first uh, uh pro tournament which was the first pro fight that i'd ever been in um in hawaii it was a 16-man tournament i ended up taking second uh actually to tim sylvia who was uh from from that fight he went into the ufc and won the won the, the ufc heavyweight title wow. um yeah, I mean, after that, won the Abu Dhabi qualifier. So that Abu Dhabi is the World Submission Wrestling Tournament. So for it's like the world's for wrestling, but this is submission wrestling. So ended up getting beat by the guy that won the whole thing. But, you know, it was I didn't know what I was doing. I was just a kid from a small town that didn't have any real training, but so just knew how to wrestle and and was tough. You know, it was mentally tough. Like, you got to be mentally tough to, to do that. So. Yeah, from there it just grew and grew and grew. On to the next thing, on to the next thing. And and uh, once my college running career was over, I went into it full time. Uh, moved to the Militage camp. From there, went to Jeremy Horns. From there, went to uh, Vegas and, and pretty much finished out my career in Vegas. Holy so it all started though with wrestling. Correct. So I was right before we went live, I was so my grandkids wrestle. Uh, little Kellen is nine and um, Landon is, gosh, I, they keep growing up. They grow up way too fast. <laughs> He's 11. So actually Kellen's almost nine. And they just, the very first time that they started wrestling, Kellen started it first. And my daughter was just like, what are they doing to these kids? Like, you know, he's a half a pound overweight. He's got to get on there. And they're just, you know, at five years old, he started and they have him all put in his sweats and they're spitting and he's all, and he, he's crying and snots come out of his nose. And everyone's like, I don't understand this. And all of a sudden he got, I mean, he was like naturally gifted. And by the next season, she's like, come on, dude, you got this. And what I realized at within the wrestling world, cause I was never around it, is that there is a different breed. It's just what they teach. It is, there's so much discipline and it doesn't come discipline from the parents. It has to be an individual discipline to even show up on the mat. Mm -hmm. So starting that, so how, how did you ever get into wrestling? So my dad wrestled in, in high school, in, in fact, the same high school uh, and then a little bit in college. And, and so he, he would take me around to the different wrestling meets as, as a kid. And I, I was horrible. Like I, he was, he was on me. Cause I was, I wasn't that good. Um, <clears throat> in fact, I don't think I won. In fact, I know this, I didn't win more matches than I lost until I was a sophomore in high school. But you stayed with it. Yeah. Well, were you made to stay with it or did you want to stay with it? <laughs> Uh, so dad was, dad was definitely, you know, now looking back, he, he, he was passionate about wrestling. He was passionate about me putting in the time. Sometimes he could have been a little extra, but, uh, you know, now being older and, and a little wiser, I understand that he, it was just his love 
for me and, 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 you know, uh, to support me. And so, uh, yeah, like, um, it took, it took a lot. I mean, it took a lot to stay in there. There was definitely times that I, that I wanted to give it up and, um, I mean, yeah, I just wasn't that, that successful as a, as a, you know, uh, a kid, like I would number, well, and then when I was small, like I was big for my age. So I always had to wrestle guys that were older than me. Cause there was no kids my age that were my size. So I was wrestling guys that were older than me and they were just whoop on me. And so, you know, didn't get a lot of success until I was about a, I mean, real success probably started for me, my junior year of high school in wrestling. So what switched? <laughs> Um, I stayed with it. Um, also, I mean, I got, <laughs> got rid of a, the, a lot of the baby fat, uh, around that, that time. And, uh, just kind of came into my own as far as being, having, a, you know, some athletic ability. Um, I'd say up until that point, I was just a goofy kind of, you know, lurpy guy that didn't, didn't have a lot of that athletic ability. Um, sure. I knew, the moves, but as far as some other guys, I just wasn't that athletic. Um, I couldn't run that well. I couldn't move around that well. I wasn't that strong. Um, you know, I wasn't gifted with those abilities that some kids, some other kids were, which, you know, can, that can go both ways. I mean, <clears throat> like we were talking about, um, you know, we were talking about before, like some of the guys that have a lot of success and, get pushed when they're little you don't hear about them you know in high school or college or even you know like a lot of times kids will have great high school careers but by the time they get to college you don't hear about hear about them after their freshman year because they're just burnt out yeah. um so i would say that that my dad did a real good job of letting me do other sports and let me get a break because wrestling takes so much it takes everything like if you're going to be successful it's got it's got to be everything it's not something you can do half-assed um it's not i mean at the highest level it, level it takes everything you got um 24 hours of your day i mean there's not you can't half-ass wrestling um you know you see these athletes in other sports that are just so athletic that, that they can go hit a ball and hit a home run and great i'm sure i mean sure there's there, i know that there's practices that, that go along with that but wrestling is just a different sport it teaches you a lot about life and it takes everything that you got all the time it's not a you know uh, we can do it two days a week and 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 you know especially in the in the season i mean you've got to be all or nothing and uh you'll see the guys that aren't putting in the time that that kind of fizzle out at the end of the year because they're not putting in the time and the effort I, so my oldest grandson plays soccer, like he's a big soccer player. He also plays flag football um, and he got into wrestling and I went to some of the wrestling practices and Kellen was like, he's the wrestler. And I'm looking at these, the conditioning practice. I have never seen anything like it from five years all the way up. They were all doing the same thing. And it just gave me a different respect. And like you said, it is all in, like you can't wrestle and half-ass anything and when you take the lessons of the mat and how it applies to life so I, i'd love to so what what characteristics what what is built on the mat i would just say a mindset a toughness that you're going like because when in wrestling you know you can't blame your teammates you can't blame your coach can't blame anybody here it's you and him out there on the mat so it's that mentality that I'm, I'm going to win. Um, <clears throat> taking that into, to, uh, you know, business and other parts of your life. It's like, it's just that, that unwillingness to lose. And, um, you know, like you put up in for this podcast, you, it is, it's either you win or you, or you learn. And um, it took me a while to, to learn that the whole uh, winning and learning because losing is tough in wrestling. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's devastating, you know, um, especially at, at, at a high level, big matches, you, you make one little mistake against a guy that you're so close with 
that's all it takes. And, and they're devastating losses because it takes a while. You, you may not get a shot with, with that guy again, you know, to get it back. And, and, and so, <clears throat> um, when it, the stuff that parlays over, you know, when I, when I'm now as a real estate investor, like, it's just, I'm going to figure it out, whatever the issue is that, you know, the people, you know, in business talk about putting out fires, like, you know, whatever the fire I'm going to be putting out, I'm going to figure it out. Like I, um, you know, moved here to Southern Oregon where there's not a lot of, of real estate investing going on. I've had to basically educate everybody, uh, buyers, sellers, title companies on what I'm doing. Uh, because for whatever reason, we live in this vortex of Southern Oregon that just doesn't understand real estate investing the way that I do business. I mean, I've had uh, brokers that have been doing business 30 plus years that said they've never heard of what I, what I do. And so um, that's that grit. There's definitely been times since I've moved back that I'm just like, it's like, man, it's just like hit me, you know, like everywhere I turn, no one understands what I'm doing to the point that some of them think that what I'm doing is legal. They think that wholesaling is illegal. When I show them that thousands of these deals get closed every day nationwide in bigger markets, it's just no one's here is doing it. And, and so to have this just constant, like banging me in the head that, 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 you know, man, did I make a mistake? You know, am I, do I need to go, you know, nope, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to figure it out. And, and I'm, I'm to that point now where I'm kind of cresting over the hill now, title companies on board, deals are going through, buyers are understanding, we're getting there. So <clears throat> um, yeah, it definitely that, that grit of wrestling, me versus you, what I'm going to figure it out, I'm going to win. And if I don't, I'm going to go back and I'm going to learn. And then I'm going to come get you again. So, you know, I, I look, I, when I say I love professional athletes and whether they're, they go into college, whether they go into pro later, it is, there's this different mindset. It's that grit, it's that tenacity. And it, if you can continue to apply that when you get out of the sport, that's the bigger lesson. I just heard a story about um, this guy went to, to talk <clears throat> for this Marine group and he was talking to this general and he said, these Marines, they're just like, they're badasses, their mindset, they're at the peak of perfection all of the time. They just have this grit, it's this excellence and they're unstoppable. But the general said that 99% of the Marines when they get out of active service, they do not follow that path. They actually go away from it. And the question was why? And, and he was saying it's their support structure because yeah. we are who we surround ourselves with. And so when we have, whether we're playing sports, whether we're in a business unit, we rise to the level of the belief and the values and the expectations around us. And so when you get off the mat and you get out of the professional world, did you still have a strong support structure to help you when you transition into real estate? No, <laughs> I definitely had to uh, instill um, am developing that you know the whole the the old saying you're the common denominator of the five people that you hang out with like uh that's something you develop you got to seek it out because <clears throat> to have the closeness and the the camaraderie and just the brotherhood of being on a wrestling team getting in a in a bus and driving for eight hours and then wrestling and then the next day going to the next tournament like that's a level of, of, you know, brotherhood, I would call it. It's going to be tough to find outside of that. Um, sure, you can develop it, like good friendships. But like when you're spending that much time and, and you're, you're overcoming adversity together, you know, um, again, at the college level, like everybody um, knows, hey, you got a tough match next match. Like it's not you know, there's high school, there's give me's, you know, there's guys that maybe didn't wrestle and or, or they're, it's their first year and get some give me's, but college level, there's no give me's like everybody's tough. And so, you know, when we go to these big tournaments and everybody's, you know, Oh, you got the number two seed first right out of the gate better, you know, and, and they're giving it back to you. Well, you got the number one seed. You better get after it too. Like, yep. That's what I'm playing. You know, <clears throat> um, so to develop, 
I definitely didn't have that. And that's something that I think, you know, um, you hear older people say that as they got older, their circle got smaller. Um, there's some truth to that because the depth of those few people, um, you know, there's only a few people that are probably, you know, for the most part, they're willing to go that depth with you. And, and um, so it's something you got to develop for sure. Well, and there was a, there's a quote on your screen and I wrote it down somewhere. Where did I put it? It's talking about hungry, right? You can't stop the person who is hungry in life. And that's yeah. no matter what, when you are hungry, you have to have that mindset of hunger. But if you don't surround yourself with people who have the same mindset, it's the, you know, it's the crab in the, in the pot, right? All of a sudden everyone's pulling you down and you end up becoming complacent. For sure. When you look at the lessons on the mat, like the characteristics that are required to, whether it's a wrestler, a professional MMA, you know, what, what characteristics are required for someone on the mat? <clears throat> um, I mean, to be successful, you, you, you definitely have to have balance. Um, you have to, I mean, for wrestling, it's, it's, it really is a sport that teaches you how to find that limit. And then wherever that bar was at last week, you need to push that bar, push that level this week. Like it, it, it teaches you how to find your limits and then push the bar because that's where success is at. And, um, you know, finding out through those conditioning workouts where <laughs> your limit was and okay, last week, week we did a you know an hour long match and I died at 33 minutes well this week I'm, when we do it again I'm gonna try and get to 45 minutes before I just die you know <clears throat> or yeah um so and so is my workout partner and he got two takedowns on me last week this week he's only gonna get one you know find out where that limit is and then push the bar and um yeah so what was really easy for you? Because sometimes there's this, we have this innate uh, ability, we're wired a certain way, some things that they're just easy, we go after and others are really hard. So what, what were the easy characteristics for you? The easy things for me was always showing up. Uh, like as far as when I say showing up, I enjoyed practices. Um, I enjoyed the grind. Um, I was, I, I never had a problem making, trying to make excuses to make it to practice. I love practice. I love getting in there and getting better. And, and, um, you know, um, later on in my career, as far as my fight career, I, I found myself enjoying helping other guys get to their, their, uh, goals <clears throat> and coaching. So, um, but that was always easy for me. The, you know, the hard stuff for me, I, I just was never a great athlete, even, you know, and I say, I was, you know, I say that humbly because yeah, I did wrestle in college and I did have some success as a fighter, but like when you put me next to the dudes that I, that some of them that I beat probably shouldn't have beat them, <laughs> you know, um, I wasn't gifted athletically like a lot of guys were, um, at that level. And, um, you know, it showed in, in, you know, some fights. There was dudes that definitely, I mean, you could just see they were just a much better athlete than me. And those are most of my losses. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, the easy part was just showing up. I, I enjoyed the practices. I enjoyed the grind. I enjoyed getting in there and um, and just getting better every day. And that's what separates the excellent, right? The outstanding people, the ones that are willing to show up and they love the process. Like it, they just love the process. They love the process of getting better. And I, I look at people, whether it's in business, whether it's in life and they hate the process, yeah. they're the ones that give up. Yeah. So how do you teach someone who doesn't like the process and they're so gifted I would say that, that that the process for whatever they're that they're not enjoying that either a as far as when it comes to business because I've had these conversations um, when it comes to business either a you're in the wrong business 
or B, you got to hire that part of the business out. If you don't enjoy it, like I don't enjoy admin and I have to, I have to hire that out. Like being in here in the, in the office and in front of the computer, I can do it for about an hour before I'm ready to throw myself out the window. So I know that that's not where I need to be. I need to be out shaking hands and doing deals and, and negotiating and all that. So, um, as far as the, <clears throat> when it comes to the whole process of business, like if there's a part of the business that you don't like, hire it out, you know, and um, sometimes you don't have the ability to hire it out right away, grind it out until you get to that point, And it's going to make you appreciate that, per, that getting, hiring that part out that much better. Um, and it, if you just don't enjoy the whole I mean, process of the business, maybe you're in the wrong business. You got to find out what you're passionate about. Yeah, and re and reverse engineer it from there. Then you're gonna enjoy the process. Then that's the whole deal. Like figure out what you're passionate about, and you'll never work another day in your in, in your life. You know. So. And, you know, and we hear that, and it's so cliche, but it is so true. When you're passionate true. about something, when you find your strengths, and also recognizing there are certain things that we have to develop. And I go back into, especially as a child, we're so we're moldable, we're shaped, you know, we can be shaped and yet children, they don't know what they don't know. And sometimes they don't like to work hard and you go back into your father teaching you to stick with it. And it's okay that you lost more than you won yet creating that balance and creating other avenues to where, did you ever have the choice whether you wanted to quit or to continue? Sure I did. Um... There, I'll, I'll tell this story. And so my, like I, like I said before, my dad was very extra, um, passionate. You want to, you want to call it some parents would probably say he's over the top. Um, but again, now that I'm older and, and kind of understand being an adult and being passionate about someone you care about and you love and you want them to be successful. Um, my, so the end of my eighth grade year, my dad would always come down on the mat and he would be there yelling and screaming and going nuts and sometimes if bigger matches or you know again bigger matches when when you're in eighth grade they're they're just got guys that you got that a tough match with but um i he uh <laughs> he had been, he basically made me upset enough at the last and i lost and uh you know he was he was he was upset because he thought i should have won and he's you know basically embarrassing me um i just basically told him i said listen if, if, uh, next year if you come out of the stands one time i quit mm -hmm. and so sure i had the uh, the ability to quit i i enjoyed wrestling i did even though um it obviously was something that i shared with my dad so you know i enjoyed that time of breaking down matches even though i got the crap kicked out of me sometimes um having that um admiration for my father i think that it, i think every child wants that you know and just having that time to sit down with them so i enjoyed that um i enjoyed wrestling i enjoyed the mat i enjoyed the practices i knew i always enjoyed that time um so it wasn't like that i just because i got beat you know and didn't have a lot of success that i hated it um i did like it and I knew that if I just stuck with it and I had enough coaches around me and, and my dad around me that it's like, you know, that's one of those sports that it, it truly is. If you stick with it, you're going to get good and you're, you're going to, you know, become better. Um, uh, like I said, it just took me a little bit longer than, than others. So. Cause that just sets you up for life. I mean, it's the same. So I talk about lessons, right? The things that happen in our childhood, those they they stay there and when you transitioned into real estate and you've since i've known you you've moved three different you were in vegas kansas city and now you're in oregon and it's like you get to restart and restart and restart and restart what was the transition like moving out of the professional fighting world and into real estate like how did you ever how did you get there i knew that in my fighting career that obviously I couldn't fight forever. And so I had a couple failed businesses, like a handyman business that I tried to start in, you know, when I say business, I hired a few guys and had a few vans and was trying to done that and that failed. 
I knew that I wasn't going to be able to fight for the rest of my life. Um, so I had started learning about real estate probably a couple of years before I stopped fighting. So, um, and I always just had a, a, a pull towards it. And then once I start, stopped fighting, I just, you know, full on went into it. I paid for some coaching and, and I finished that coaching and six weeks later, I flipped my first house. So, um, you know, there's a lot of the same stuff, like, you know, practice, figure out, you know, teach yourself in it. And then there's a process and then go do it. You know, um, I think that's one of the big things, especially in the real estate space, people will get paralysis. What's it called? Paralysis, Morales. Analysis, paralysis paralysis they just they get so in they're afraid of their own shadow and they'll go and they'll learn from you know all these things and they'll pay for all this you know coaching but they'll never go out and take take action and i just that's the one thing i i know personally in the real estate space it's such a big issue it's like guys you got to go out and do something i don't care it could be the smallest action but take action like we only learn so much from YouTube University about real estate investing before you got to go out and actually do something. So, yeah, it uh, that yeah, I mean that's the transition was was fairly easy. I mean, it was basically kind of the same deal. You know, learn and then go take some action and go go do it. But it, you take that from you know younger years of being an athlete. You have a coach, and in order to get better you get to listen to your coach and it yeah. transitions into take action. Like you have yeah. it's one thing to hear the words. It's another thing to actually do it. And sometimes yeah. we get so stuck in our way and the ego shows up. It's like, no, I, I know how to do this, but you have to be willing to shift. Right. And then getting into real estate, you went back into what you knew worked. It is hire a coach, but it's not just hire one. The key is to take action. Did you ever within the real estate, market want to quit sure <laughs> the, the real estate thing has definitely been tough you know uh go, and again kind of going back to what you're saying like different markets you know things that that worked in certain markets don't work in others and and then you got to figure it out you know and it's just like for me i guess i you know taking it back to fighting or or wrestling like it's an opponent and i got to break it down on how to beat it you know like okay they're you know this market's weak here and strong here. These were, these are the shifts I need to make to be successful in this market. So, you know, uh, somewhat of the same deal of breaking down an opponent, like this guy's got, you know, he lowers his hand and he's bad with, with, uh, you know, take down defense. And I'm pretty sure I can, I can take him down and, you know, he's pretty good at getting back on his feet and whatever, you know, what breaking up, breaking down the opponent is a lot of the same deal of breaking down a new market. And it goes back into the process, right? You trust the process. You know what you do. You focus on that one thing. If it doesn't work, you shift. And but you keep your eye on the goal, and you yeah. work the process. Yeah. Um, it's not just that I've had days. You know, kind of going back to your to your question, like I've had some rough days with real estate investing that where I've made mistakes and lost decent amounts of money in this deal, and and um, you know made some bad moves that that. Uh, lost a lot of money and so there's been some rough ones uh but you just you get up the next day and you go put your boots on and and get after it again and and you know try and make sure that doesn't happen again so how do you keep your head in the game because it's hard to like to have failure if you aren't winning and i go back it just amazes me that you could stick with and i, I go back into your childhood the wrestling that you could stick with something where you're losing more than you're winning and it, it's actually a gift to be where you're at but still people don't like to fail for sure uh but that's like kind of you know going back to some of the we were talking about how you know the younger ages just kids wrestling or any real sport um they have that that super good success when they're kids and then they kind of get into some adversity where they start getting into some tougher opponents and things get a little tough sometimes those are the kids that you don't see again once they never learned how to grit it out they've always they've had the gift and they, they it just came easy and they knew how to they just had that athletic ability and they were smoking kids that were like me that just not very athletic and they never really had to work for it 
I never really had to kind of grit matches out. Well, you know, as it goes up and, or, you know, as they get older and they start having to grit some stuff out, that's not, um, that muscle's not worked. It's not, it's not grown on how to grit stuff out. And so um, just the belief in the process, you know, I've, I've now had enough mentors in, in the real estate game that you just got to stick with it. If you're, if you're a, a hard worker and you, and you're somewhat intelligent, then you can figure it out. There's a, there's a guy that's done it before you go get with him and, and, you know, conversate with him, you know, try and get him to coach you. If you won't coach you, just <laughs> take him to coffee, but there's a person that's done it before you. And, um, and so it's, it's not the, like the, the what's the, the old saying? It's, uh, it's, it's not easy, but it's simple. Mm. You know, like it is, it is very tough. Real estate investing is tough. Um, it's not easy, but it is a simple process. If you really draw it, you know, flow charted out of, of, you know, finding a motivated seller, finding a, a cash buyer, getting it closed in the title company. Like it's a simple process, but it's tough. If it was easy, everybody could be doing it. And so, being committed to it. Yeah, for sure. So you said earlier, one of the characteristics that was easy for you that you learned on the mat was balance. So talk about that. How does that, how did that work? How does that work in your life now? I would say that balance is something I learned way late, way late. Uh, kind of going back to how um, wrestling takes so much. Um, I was full on just, you know, hard work. I, I probably learned balance as far as like balancing my life out late in my career of fighting. Wrestling is just, it's just all. It's just, there is no, oh, I'm only going to go 90% today. Like it's just, it's all. If you're going to be successful at it, it takes everything. You've got to give everything at it, you know. Um, so I'm doing CrossFit now, and I'm learning about myself as far as an athlete. Like, I've never known how to, like, uh, you know, uh, basically, uh, what's it called? Like, go easy through some, you know, take it easy through certain rounds. It's just all or nothing. Right. So it's teaching me that, that you know, you can't go crazy with these workouts because I, I do. Like, I'll – it'll be a, like a four round deal in CrossFit. And the first three rounds, I'm like a savage in the fourth round. I'm just like dead, you know? And so pa pacing myself, that's the word I'm looking for, you know, learning to pace yourself, you know, and, and have that balance. It, even in athletics, you, you know, um, in wrestling, you, you don't learn that there is no pacing in, in, in wrestling. It's, it's, you know, everything you got for the, the, you know, six minutes or eight minutes, whatever the match is for, there is no pacing. And so that's, and, and that's literally the, the name of the game with wrestling. You're literally trying to break the other guy. You're trying to take him to his limits. And so that's not taught as a wrestler to pace yourself like a runner or a, I mean, anywhere else where pacing would be something that would be at an advantage. Like there's no pacing, like you're, yeah. you're going there to break the other person and win and find, take him to his limit and, your line is over this, you know, his line. So it's, uh, so as far as balance, getting back to that, like, you know, having some time for friends and having time to, to, for my family, that sort of balance, is that kind of what you're talking about? Yeah. Like that I learned late, real late, probably last couple of years of my, of my fighting career, how to, how to really balance that out. Um, that was foreign to me. I I just knew one direction and at a hundred miles an hour the entire exactly, time let's win. Exactly. Like it, you know, obviously, you know, you gotta have the yin and the yang. You gotta have relax, you know, R and R time to heal your body. Like I got that. I understood that. But when it was time to go, like, the, you know, in for, for wrestling, it's a three month, four month season um, for fighting. It's a, it's a two or three month training camp getting ready for the fight and then the other time is just you know you take some time off after the fight and then but then you get back to uh you know getting in get keeping depending on how far the fight's away obviously you, you maintain and make sure that you're you're there for your other for your other training partners but uh 
um, when the fight comes around and the thing's signed and you got, you know, two months, three months, so somewhere out there, you, you start the training camp and that's, it consumes you. There's nothing else matters. So if you had to do it all over again, knowing what you know now, and you got to restart from the very beginning, what would you have done differently? Wow. Uh, I think I would have, well, with everything that I got to do with my athletic career, even, I mean, starting as early as when I was a junior in high school, I got, I won a tournament, cultural exchange tournament to go represent Oregon over in Sweden and, and Hungary. And those times for me, like now being older and thinking back to all those trips I got to take, you know, I mean, like I said, Europe, Brazil, Japan twice, you know, Tokyo twice, the Philippines, South, uh, South Africa, you know, Mexico, Canada, um, where else? I mean, all these places I've been, I could have just slowed down in those times and kind of enjoyed them a little bit better. I would say that that might be something I would tell the young, my younger self. But, you know, I, I, I was blessed. I got to see a lot of the world with everything. All, you know, every one of those trips was paid for. I, I didn't pay for, you know, one dollar of those trips and learned a lot about, you know, different cultures being in, in those trips. When you're over there for a fight, you get to meet some of the guys from over there and go, you know, sit with them in, in their house and how they live and, and uh, see their culture. And, and so um, it was awesome. The traveling was, you know, something I, I wish I could have slowed down or, or I guess appreciated more and maybe even, you know, now thinking back on it, I wish I would have spent a little money to stay there in those different places. Cause that was always an option, but it, it, I didn't know it was, it was an option until later in my career that I could have paid some money to have my flight just stayed there for a couple of weeks after to really enjoy those trips. You know, um, most of the trips I was there, you know, week, week and a half, but I was there mainly getting ready for a fight and maybe a couple of days after or, or a day after to really enjoy it. So, um, that would probably be what, you know, something it, uh, kind of weighs on me here and there. It's like, yeah. been all these places, but that, that ties into what you were saying about balance, right? That that's pacing and balance. If we, and, and this is a perfect time in life to really look at, we're actually forced more now than ever to just slow down in a way but at the same time we've ramped up like i watch people in the first you know march april may we slowed down we got reconnected to things that were important uh, we took more time we started to do different things that we said we wanted to but as soon as life became a little bit normal for us again i've watched the patterns of people and they go right back into the way they've always done things and it's like this i don't know if it's a scarcity or a fear mentality it's just like it's never enough it's never enough it's like they're being left behind yeah maybe it's what they always what they knew what they're comfortable with i don't know yeah yeah huh. so i'm actually going to open the people who are on here if you're watching live on facebook i can't see questions or comments um we only see them here uh, on the webinar if you have questions for mike would you just put that either in the q a or in the chat and if you have questions on Facebook Live, absolutely put them there and Mike and I will go back later and answer them. Um, but I do have a, actually a couple of questions from Amber who yeah. wasn't able to be on here. She's gonna watch it in a, a little bit here. She yeah. said, what national tournaments did you go to to be seen and scouted when you were a wrestler? So Fargo, Super 32. So uh, again, like, things that wasn't that great. I never, I, I, I went to Fargo one time, okay. you know, again, I, I didn't win more matches until I lost until I was basically a sophomore. So the, these big matches and these big tournaments, some of them, you got to win like a regional thing to get to. I wasn't that good. So I, I didn't win the ones to be accepted into these bigger tournaments. Um, I would just like, we've kind of already touched on, I would just stress to your, to your daughter and, and son-in-law, like if he, if they're passionate about it at that age, like 
I've just seen like it, it, if you talk to any wrestler that's been wrestled for any sort of time, the number of kids is countless uh, that are, are great or even somewhat good at that age. And, um, and then by the time they're in high school or college, you don't hear about them. They fizzle out because wrestling is just that sport that it takes everything out of you. And then, and then on the reverse of that, so like, so the kids that you've heard of, like that are great when they're young and, 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 and whatever. And, oh, when this person gets to this age, they're going to be, you know, they're already ranked number one and they're, they're nine or 10 years old. And, but you don't hear about them in high school or college, the reverse number of kids that start wrestling their freshman year. And I know bunches of these guys. They started wrestling their freshman year. They, 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 they were somewhat athletic and fell in love with the sport of wrestling. Go on, win, maybe do, do well their freshman year, you know, maybe get to state their, their sophomore year, win it their junior and senior year, go on to, to college and win national tournaments. That number is not as big as the other number, but it's big. Like, does that make sense? It does. Like, we actually work it, with it allowed, it allowed the kid to really fall in love with the sport of wrestling because wrestling is not a sport that you can just be handed, you know, and do all the time. It's just not. It's you will, I mean, it takes I'll I'll say this. I don't I can't think of a kid. Yeah. I can't even think of one that was great and had all these accolades at a young age that went on to college. Well, you know, that's not true. There's, there's a few, now that I think about it, there's a few, but that's a very small number of kids that I can think of that had decent success as a college wrestler um, or high school and college um, that were great you know, kid wrestlers, uh, but that's that number is just so small. Hmm. Um, it, it's dwarfed by the number of kids that like when they were younger, their names everywhere. And then by the time they're a junior in high school, you know, they, they're not wrestling. They hate the sport. They're so burnt out on it. And they just, you don't hear about them because they don't go to any of the tournaments or, you know, Say they made it through high school and they won a couple of state tournaments, state titles, because they're just that gifted. Uh, the college that they get, you know, uh, uh, you know, that they go to on scholarship, their freshman year, they're you know, they're done. They're, you know, quit the team. They're partying and 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 smoking and and you know doing drugs because they're just so burnt out on the sport of wrestling. I mean, that number is huge, huge. Any wrestler that you know has a huge number of those people that they know and and a very small number of of wrestlers that they know that when they were that age that now they're in in college doing well or beyond you know even taking wrestling to you know the, the world level again like there's that's just such a small number so just it's a sport that you gotta let them fall in love with it and um you know some uh, coaches or, or parents I've talked to, they're like, well, <clears throat> you know, if they started, I wanted to finish it. I get that, but that <laughs> it's wrestling's a tough sport to make that stick because it's it with football or baseball. Sure. They can kind of go through the motions and go to the practices and learn football and learn to bat. Wrestling's not a sport that you can just go to practices and go through the motions. Like, it's just not, you can't go there and not want to be there. Um, so there's a, just a, it's a fine line. And um, I would just say that, you know, again, come back to let them dictate the pace. And um, if they're wanting to go do that stuff, great. If they don't, don't make them. I've seen the same thing we work with uh, college soccer teams, tennis teams, golf teams, and the exact same thing that you're saying has showed up in so many of theirs. A lot of them, there's so many kids that that wasn't their number one sport until like high school. And all of a sudden it shifted because they fell in love with the game. 
Uh, okay, so I have another question here. What is the difference between um, the youth wrestling now and the wrestling that you did back then? Or is there a difference? I don't think there's a, I mean, uh, <clears throat> youth wrestling back then. So, I mean, I would say there for a while, wrestling was kind of dying out. And, and I would say at the, at the high school rest at the high school level, wrestling is kind of dying out because uh, kids are just not wanting to put in the work. Mm. I mean, really at, at the end of the day, like high school coaches are having a hard time filling, filling rosters. Um, even my, high school coach who we have a great wrestling program here in Southern Oregon. And just, I mean, we've been ranked nationally multiple times and just a huge following I mean, having, having kids stay out and stay out throughout the season is, is somewhat tough. Um, how has it changed? I would say that. Why, I would say do you think that's why uh, a lot of college, the D1, is they're cutting the wrestling program is because they can't fill the roster like they used to? Oh, the D1 programs are cutting the roster because they because it does financially it doesn't make sense. Like there for a while it was it was Title IX, you know the Title IX deal was why because there wasn't a female version of of you know wrestling, uh, but I would say nowadays they're cutting them just because I mean not a lot of people are coming and watching. Uh, wrestling duels it's just they don't get the sport so they, it's hard for them to get behind it and come and enjoy it and 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 um you know support the sport of wrestling so just a lot of people don't come so you know if you're not selling tickets and it's the worst performing you know sport on your on your roster and you're having to cut you know some costs it's usually wrestling that gets the gets the cut So when you think about, well, and Gary Keller, he was about the one thing, right? The one thing. Did you ever have a one thing within wrestling, like a signature move? Or did you focus on a few different things, which that actually ties to life, right? We, we focus on one thing that we're really good at, but do you have other things that you focus on as well? I guess what I'll relate that to is I, my high school coach was really great. Uh, taught me a lot about wrestling, taught me a lot about life. And he was super intelligent. Um, he, he told me my sophomore year, he go, it's kind of like the one thing, but you know, it, it, a little bit different for wrestling. He goes, if you can have one takedown, get good at one takedown, you can be, have, uh, have one good move from the top and you can get off the bottom. So those, those three things within the sport of wrestling one that, you know, in that position would be considered the one thing. He's like, if you can do those three things by your senior year, you'll win a state title. And that's in essence, how I won the state title my senior year. I had one takedown that I was good at. I was tough on top and I could get off the bottom. So how does that apply to business? Um, I guess what I would say is, is there's, there's thing like, when it comes to like the uh, Gary V, mm -hmm. you know, Gary V is yep. a lot of people know Gary V. You know he's a big advocate, and a lot of the big business guys are are advocates of don't don't focus on your weaknesses, focus on your strengths, and smash your strengths and hire out your weaknesses. And that's really what you know in essence what that dials back to me for for me is like get good at one takedown, be good at that one takedown. Don't work on five takedowns and be okay at five be great at one be good on top have a good move off the top and be tough on top and then have your move off the bottom be able to get off the bottom from you know from everybody um so you know i would say that is, is in essence is the same deal like focus on your strengths hire out your weaknesses and go crush it love it I love, it. and you're so, I mean, so many times that I think about my life, right? I, there's so many things I want. I'm a dreamer, like Eric and I are dreamers. And Jason Lindstrom actually gave us this feedback. He said, you guys think so big. I want you to get really good at those one or two things and you focus on that. Yeah. And it's just reaffirming because I love to dream and I love to get big. But when you do that one thing, and it's not that you can't grow on top of something else, 
but you're so focused on that core and then everything else comes from that core. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So as we get ready to close, um, and if there's any last minute questions, put them in. And for your closing, just thoughts, what is the message that you want to get out to people? If you could say anything to help encourage them, what would that be? I guess we're busy, you know, it's kind of, we, we talked about it or we touched on it is, uh, you know, figure out what you're good at, figure out what your passion is um, and, and then reverse engineer it from there. What you, what you like to do, you know, um, so many people are in a job that they hate and in a career that they hate. And it's like, go change it, you know, figure out what you want to do and reverse engineer it from there. I, I just had this uh, discussion with a family member a couple of days ago. It's like, Go figure out what you love to do and then figure out a way to make money from it. And it's not that hard. I mean, sure, it's going to be a tough process, but like um, figuring out what you what you are passionate about shouldn't be that hard. What do you think about a lot? What do you enjoy doing? You know, um, and then reverse engineer it from there and, and then just go do it. Take action. It could be the smallest action, but like every that's one step closer to getting to where you, where you need, need and want to be. And so, you know, I let off with need. You need to be there because it's again, like people that go to these jobs, they hate, you're literally just sucking the life out of people. And um, they're doing it to themselves because they're like, Oh, I'm just stuck. No, you're not. No one's stuck. I mean, <laughs> I've restarted so many times it's, you can restart. Mm. Not that bad. Um, it's always worse in your head than, than, you know, when it, when you actually make the steps to go do it, you build it up way worse in your head. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's that false evidence appearing real. For sure. I, I put something out yesterday. It's the power of the reset. We get to start again. Like it is such a choice and opportunity to start again. And it's being able to look at it, right? It's when people have that, that hunger and that drive and they fall down and they fall down and they fall down. Sometimes people just stay down, but it's the willingness to go, Nope, I'm going to get back up. Today's a new day. It's a reset. I'm going to start again. Yeah. And when you fall in love with the process and you fall in love with the passion, it's that's where life, like it's worth living. Yeah. yeah. Lance said, thanks, Mike. Always energized listening to another person with a similar passion. I just, I adore you. I am so grateful you said yes. I love listening to you. And I go back into when you were in the classroom at the forge and to just see this gentle giant who is so hungry. You have this incredible passion, yet you're willing to listen. You're willing to pivot. And I just, I adore you. I respect the heck out of you. Thank you. You're welcome. Especially coming from you. Yeah. Yeah. Was Eric at? What's was that? Was Eric there with you? He actually had to leave. He said to tell you hi, and he will connect with you soon. Miss him too. Yeah. Well, I just want to thank everyone for being on here. Thank you, Mike, from the bottom of my heart. Have an amazing Thanksgiving. And I, you know, and I always look at the time of Thanksgiving as truly the attitude of gratitude. And I am so grateful that our paths crossed. Um, there's no coincidences there. There's always things that we get to learn and build from. And my, you know, my friend, just consider me in your support. So if you ever have an off day and you're just like, ah, call me. And that, you know, I just, that's my passion. Because when I look at that, that whole status of the Marines, and if we don't have people that we surround ourselves with that help raise that bar in our life, we end up going back to the people, you know, we, we go down to their level and uh, whew, we're meant to play out loud. For sure. So have a great day. Thank you everyone. And we will see you soon. All right. All right. Bye for now.